on to number 34. It says an insurance company sells a 20-year term life insurance policy with a face value of $230,000 to a 45-year-old woman. Her annual premium is $1,010. If the woman dies after paying her premium for six years, what is the insurance company's gain or loss? So the way insurance works is if you purchase this insurance, so like in this case, this woman purchased a 20-year term life insurance. If she dies any time in those 20 years, then her beneficiaries will receive the $230,000. So here it says that she died after six years. So she paid $1,010 every year for six years, meaning that in those six years, she spent $6,060 for this policy. But then she died, and so the insurance company paid out the $2,030. We have to subtract what she paid into it, and we see that the insurance company actually lost money to the tune of $223,940. All right, examine the graph at what price is the maximum profit, okay? Right here is my profit line. This is profit, and this is expense. So it's asking, at what point is the profit at its maximum? Well, the higher you go, that's a maximum there. And so if we look and go straight down here, where it's at its maximum is $24.00. And that would be our answer here. Its maximum profit will be if they charge $24 for this product. All right, it says, what is the four-day SMA for the following closing prices? So what we're doing here is finding a lot of averages. The first that we're going to do is we're going to take the first four values. Why? Because it said it's a four-day SMA. We're going to say 58 plus 60 plus 52 plus 87, and we're going to find the average. So we're going to add those together and divide by 4. We end up with 64.25. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cross out the first one, and we're going to do the second through the fifth. So we do 60 plus 52 plus 87 plus 59, and we divide it by 4. And we end up there with 64.50. The next one, we're going to cross out the 60, and we're going to do the 4 after that. So 3, 4, 5, and 6. We've got 52 plus 87 plus 59 plus 58, all divided by 4, and we end up with $64 is the average. Finally, we're going to cross out the 52 and do the final 4. So we have 87 plus 59 plus 58 plus 59, all of that divided by 4, and we end up with 65.75. So the four-day SMA listed will actually be as follows. It'll be 64.25, comma, 64.50, comma, 64, and finally, 65.75. And that is my final answer. All right, number 37, it says, Dawn opened a retirement account with an APR of 5.25, compounded monthly, and he's going to retire in 20 years. How much will he have in the account if he deposits 
$950 a month. So this should take you back to financial math one. We've done this before, and it is one of our formulas. It is our PIB formula. We're making multiple deposits. It's compounded, and it wants to know a future value. So we need to know the P, R, N, and T. P, remember, is principal. So it's going to be $950 a month. The rate is going to be 0 0.0525. It's going to compound monthly, and it's going to be over a period of 20 years. Plugging that into our formula, luckily we have that on our calculator. We're going to get a value of We have three more to go. Sahim has $30,000 in property damage insurance, a $10,000 in comp and collision with a $250 deductible. One evening, he slides on a patch of ice and his car um, hits a patch of ice, hits a parked car, causes $7,500 worth of damage to that other car. It also causes damage to his car of $2,750. How much will the insurance company pay to fix both cars? So under property damage, you have to remember that property damage covers other people's property. And in this case, the other car is somebody else's property. He's got 30000 in insurance, meaning that it will cover anything up to 30000 well, it only caused $7,500 worth of damage to the other car. So it's going to pay all $7,500. Now, with comp and collision, that's where you have your deductible. And a deductible is what you have to pay first. So in this case, we've got $2,750 worth of damage to his car but there is a $250 deductible, so we have to take that out because he has to pay that, not the insurance company. And the insurance company will pay $2,500 of that. So if we take the $7,500 and the $2,500 and add them together, the insurance company is going to pay $10,000 of this accident. All right, two more. Eleanor purchased $2,593 worth of stock and paid her broker an 0.8% fee. When she sold it, the price increased by $31.48 and she was charged $9 for the trade. So the big thing here, you always need to know it's the sell minus the buy gives you your net profit or loss. If it's positive, it was a profit. If it's negative, it's a loss. So if we first look at the sell price, when she sold it, she got $3,148, but she had to pay a $9 fee. So she ended up with $3,139 as the sell price. Now, when she bought it, she bought it at $25.93, but she had to pay a fee. So we're going to multiply this by 1.008. And why is it 1.008? First off, if I have 0.8%, I move it over twice. That's where I get the 0.008. And it's that plus the cost of the actual stock. So the cost of the stock is 100% of it, and if we convert that to a decimal, it's 1. So 1 plus 0 .008 gives me 1.008. And when I multiply that value, I end up with 
$2,613.74. So that's how much it cost me to purchase it. So I'm going to subtract that. And the difference is my net profit or loss. So in this case, I end up with a positive $525.26. So I had a $525.26 gain. All right, last one. It says John and Loretta are in the 28% tax bracket. Their joint taxable income is $139,499. If the first $16,000 is taxed at 10% and the remainder at 28%, how much tax do they owe? So, we know that $16,050, if we multiply that by 10 cents, 10%, it's 1605 So, we have 1605 that's the first $16,050. Plus, it says 28% of the remainder. So we're going to take their total taxable income of the $139,499, and we're going to subtract out the $16,050. Why are we taking that out? Because we've already accounted for that first $16,050 in that 10% tax that we paid. When we multiply this through and add them together, we find that their taxes owed are $36,170.72. And that is the last one for this review. Good luck.